Hello, everybody. Turn this up in my headphones, Charles. Turning it up. <laughs> hello, 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 everybody, one and all. Welcome to yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. My name is Charles, and with me today is my lifelong friend and co-host, Dylan. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend, Charles. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend as well, Dylan, and not just any fantasy today, Dylan. I'm very oh. excited because we are bringing back a segment, an author, a series that I have mm. thoroughly enjoyed. It is always an exciting day in on the FTF podcast when we are talking about The King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. And what better way to celebrate The King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss than through a series that we like to call Quoth Quotes and Other Prose 2? <laughs> or other pros. <laughs> I think the series is just quote quotes and other pros. And yes. this is the second in that series. So, yeah, I'm super pumped. We love talking about the King Killer Chronicle on the show and we we've, we've talked a lot about it. We have no intentions of stopping anytime soon and one way that we're keeping the conversation going is by drawing from all these incredible quotes from the great Patrick Rothfist, well known for his pros and it gives us the chance to just reflect on his wisdom on the story on the things that we love about it and the the way that we find is optimal for us to be able to express that is when we don't hold back when it comes to spoilers for mm -hmm. the name of the wind and the wise man's fear so charles and i will be talking about those those two books, no holds barred when it comes to spoilers, which means it's time to turn this down your headphones if you haven't yet read those two books and you don't want them spoiled. Very well said, Dylan. So let's not delay any longer. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the quotes. And we have like an ongoing Google Doc just full of quotes that we've highlighted during our yeah. book discussion of the King Killer Chronicles way back when, like the second series <laughs> we ever read on the show. So... We're just going to be pulling from that in no particular order, both in the books and in, um, yeah, just the, in the story. So let's just go ahead and get one started. Dylan, would you do the honors of presenting our first quote for the evening? Sure thing, Charles. We have one here that says, we understand how dangerous a mask can be. We all become what we pretend to be. I have some thoughts on on this one, but I'll... all right. No, let's 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 hear your thoughts. Sure. Yeah. So I I always think about this one from the perspective of Coat, which is it's Quoth who is at this point no longer calling himself Quoth. He is slipped into this role as an innkeeper, and we you know we know that. Uh, waiting to die bit that they say about where Coat is at in his life. And you, it's interesting because we get all of these moments with Coat where it's like he can slip so easily into this humble innkeeper role where everyone around him is believing him to be that person and then he starts telling his story again of the time in which he was quoth and we start getting these flashes of quoth of the you know quote the bloodless and all these kind of things and it also for me revolves around these ideas of of quoth's legend and myth and kind of i think there's a big theme in the king killer chronicle that we see throughout is where does the truth lie and can Quoth himself even distinguish at this point between what he has pretended to be in the past in terms of like this ridiculously legendary figure, what he pretends to be now in terms of a humble innkeeper with no ridiculous history, and like where in all of this does the 
yeah, does the truth lie? And we talk so much about the potential for unreliable narration in this story. And I just think that this quote reminds me of all of those themes in this story. That's true. And it's also this idea of stories taking on life and the story that we tell ourselves affecting who we are as a person this mask mm-hmm. of like, oh, I'm quoth, I'm a bit of a rogue, I can't be happy, I can't be in a relationship, like all these things are <sighs> stories we tell ourselves and that becomes the mask and, and it, it's a dangerous slope, I, I think is the warning of this uh, of this quote where it's like, uh, hey, um, you can talk yourself into being anyone and it's oftentimes runs the risk of not being good. So that's kind of my takeaway. From this, from this beautiful line of prose from Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah, well said, Charles. I agree. All right, let's get another quote out here in the mix. And let me see, I'm going through our list here. Um, this is a quote that we, this is a, that contains a phrase that we drop all the time when we're talking about King Killer Chronicles, and that's the idea of a beautiful game. So let me just go ahead and, and, and read this quote, and Dylan, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about it, of course. Mm. Um, so I did not try to win her and contend myself with playing a beautiful game, but there was always a part of me that hoped for more, and so there was a part of me that was always a fool. Tears. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the... The quote and Dana relationship is what's being evoked here with this quote. It's it's co reflecting on how he, uh, you know, there's this whole thing with quote and Dana that I'm sure we don't have to explain to people who have read the books in in too much detail, but he Dana is someone who does not want to be one or just like tied to someone every time people start doing that to her she moves away from it because all of these people we get a sense that we don't know a lot about denna we get a sense that she's frequently trying to be controlled and what it seems like she most wants a lot of the time is just the freedom and autonomy to make her own decisions and live her life in a world that makes that very hard for a woman who has not had a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. with the way society is structured. I mean, like Dioc talks about that in, in detail. So yeah, then so Quoth kind of understands that relatively early on. And this kind of draws from the, the whole tack thing, right? Tack is a beautiful game. It's a board game that uh, Quoth plays uh, and it is, uh, it's not about winning. It's about, uh, I mean, enjoying the process and being present and I mean having fun might be a little bit of a like lower brow way of saying it but I think that's true too it's just in enjoying it for what it is and spending time with people and I think that quote he always uh, he wants to just spend time with Denna and enjoy it and be present and at the same time there's this piece of him that he's always fighting with and grappling with that just like does want to win her and does want to uh, we talk about the jacks and the moon story mm-hmm. where like jacks the the boy tries uh, like successfully does capture the moon and it's the same kind of parallel of like the moon is the moon is something that is incredible and you can just enjoy it for what it is and when it's out there it's out there and when it's not it's not but like you to try to contain it and capture it is like inimical to what it's all about. And I think that that parallels with Denna and Quoth knows it, but he's just so Quoth <laughs> that when he wants something, he it's hard for him to, to stop himself from having this, as he would say, foolish part of himself that's always looking for more. And I do think that it's, uh, we won't get into necessarily too much detail here but i think it is there's another quote it's hard to long for something that is always there and i that's i don't think that is used in a way that it necessarily is supposed to evoke 
Denna, like, explicitly, but I always thought about it that way, too, is, like, Denna is always moving out of his life and then back into it, and I think it's that that makes him long for her so much more, and it's the same kind of thing with the moon and stuff like that. It's, like, the moon is only there at night, so then Jax longs for it, like, those kind of things. So, I don't know. I've talked about Denna. It's probably not surprising. I just talked for however long I did, Um, but... (laughs) These are the Denna stuff These, quotes, yeah. and you know, I, I <laughs> go to our in defense of Denna episode where I go into even more <laughs> yeah. detail. If you want to hear me go, you gotta go on far back to get that to, to get yeah. that episode. Now it's it's kind of interesting how far we've come. But this is a great quote, and I I want to compare it to the quote that we read before about mm. the masks and how we become what we pretend to be. Okay, and because. It's we always talk about how important it is to remember that this is part of a narrative, right? This is Quoth or Coat telling the story of Quoth. Yeah. And so he's saying these things. He said, Oh, I was always part the fool and I was always trying to win her. And I strongly believe that these are some of the masks that Coat himself has put on his own mm. story. Because, oh, I was always part of the fool for like I, oh, I was content with myself for not trying to win her. You know, like I do feel like yeah. there's a little bit of Quoth telling his own story here and kind of neglecting these other parts where it's like, you're actually way too nervous to make the first move back on the water. You know, it's like, like that's, I don't know if you were content in those moments, right? You were, you were just kind of, you're making the best of the situation that you have. You know, I, I think it's important to acknowledge like, look, both of you were, trying to pursue your own goals in life and just the situation of where you both were in your lives, you weren't ready to be together. You know, you're both hunting for information. You're both trying to become more powerful in your own ways or more autonomous in your own ways. Um, And that brought you two together sometimes and it brought you two apart. And that was just the priorities that you had, which, which makes a lot of sense. That's how a lot of relationships come and go. It, For it, sure. Whether the timing is right, the situation is right. But just to then put this mask on of, oh, um, I was always the fool or I'd always... I was always content with myself for playing these beautiful games. I'm sure a large part of that is true, but we also have to be reminded that Code is capable of putting on his own masks, <laughs> which is yeah. hard to believe when you take it straight as fact from the narration of the book. But I think a huge part of what Rothfuss is trying to achieve mm. in this series is like even the narrator is not subject to putting on his own masks and playing this dangerous game as well as this beautiful one. So that's just mm. the the connection I wanted oh, to bring. That's... <laughs> oh yeah, Charles. No, that's so insightful. It's a very it feels very Charles. I'll say <laughs> like a very very sensible way of thinking about this it makes a lot of sense and it's a great perspective and i'm like kind of thinking about it now i think it's like because it's about these these rationalizations yes that that's Quoth the, is that's giving what himself. I'm trying to say, yeah it's yeah. like a justification a rationalization and i think you know those are kind of things i think like joe abercrombie loves to do is like these things about how people tell themselves stories about themselves and rationalize and all this stuff but then you look at their behaviors and it's not always aligned i think that uh, quoth quoth has a lot of that and i think yeah i'm I get I'm s I w I frequently get very in my feelings about the <laughs> Denna and Quoth relationship and I guess it was hard for me to I, I, in my feelings now when I think about the Quoth and Denna relationship and I think that it's it's a very interesting and insightful perspective you present there, Charles, to kinda mm-hmm. think about this more rationally about this like dude, but Quoth, what do you like what are you talking about like you say you were content you say but then you had he has this we, these weird moments because not only is he not willing to make the first move and actually do something mm-hmm. but he's also like has this weird moment where he's kind of like ekes out like love me yeah and it's like oof, like it hurts yeah and we get it he's a teenager like uh, we love to you know we we try to view quoth uh warts and all and we we love him in a lot of ways and we see his faults in the ways that a lot of teenagers frequently (laughs) and and beyond frequently have faults when it comes to vulnerability and expressing themselves and he kind of has this moment like dude quoth if you're actually content with playing the beautiful game and just being present and enjoying your time with this person 
you wouldn't have had that like weird awkward moment yeah. where you yeah. eked that out and it was like uncomfortable for everyone exactly so we feel for quoth or i do i oh i feel, I for, feel quoth for quoth too. we feel for denna oh, denna's yeah. one of my favorite character as people probably know denna is one of my favorite characters in all of fiction so i you i know, think we're at the I phase where we can be reminded of, yeah. of that and it's interesting yeah. you say the phrase like caught up in your feelings and that's what i that's where i think the King Killer Chronicles shine so much. And that's why I think you in particularly, but both of us gravitates towards the series and have a connection with this, with this series yeah. so directly is that this series is all about just being caught in your feelings. And a quote that I wanted to bring up now is, uh, mm. isn't that the way of the world? We want the sweet things, but we need the unpleasant ones. And Oof. this to me is a beautiful phrase, turn of phrase, but it's also, yeah, brilliantly weaves into this idea of the beautiful game because a beautiful game is not a game where it's all the sweet things a beautiful yeah. game is the sweet and the unpleasant that bring about these honest moments that are life so to me when i read this quote of like isn't like we want only good things to happen but the things that are not good that happen are also part of who we are and part of what make these experiences like cut up when we get caught up in our feelings that's life whether it's good or bad so we can't neglect one or the other we can't deny one by putting a mask on or the like it, it, it all like Rothfuss is weaving all these ideas together to create this philosophy that i think is just absolutely brilliant that's so well said charles yeah and i think that it's the unpleasant things oftentimes that we learn the most from at least that's been my experience in my own life is Mm -hmm. yeah the sweet things are awesome i want a life full of many of the sweet things in life and at the same time when i think about the the points in my life that have been most influential and hopefully (laughs) hopefully led to self-improvement and personal growth i think that oftentimes they were things that were extremely unpleasant in the moment and they like you said charles they're part of who we are and they help shape us so yeah so well said charles and thanks that's such a great quote that you pulled (laughs) thank you yeah no i i love this whole philosophy about accepting the bad with the good and just because it's unpleasant doesn't mean it's something that should be avoided or um, neglected or cut off so that whole philosophy that is weaved throughout king killer and it's expressed in such an honest way too and it's not ever explicitly told through quote of like this is what quote's going through right now it's just we're perceiving it as quote is so that is to me what is so brilliant about the king killer chronicles and i just think that these series of quotes the fact that this happened to kind of be you can string them all together in a certain way it, it just speaks to this philosophy that is the king killer chronicles that i just love so much yeah Totally agree. There's there's so much there. And I think that this next quote that I'm looking at, it's answers were always important, but they were seldom easy. And I think of that through a, a similar lens of this. The, the thing, the answers or the wisdoms and insights that are most, most worth it, most worth deriving are oftentimes the ones that we, we search hardest for. And we have to go through the most questioning to find. And I think that it it mirrors this idea of the unpleasant things, the searching, the ruminating, the wondering, the trying to figure it out, that in the end, those are oftentimes the things that, that shape us. And when we do find the answers to them, the it's like the effort of the search due to all of that um, potential unpleasantness or Mm -hmm. questioning ends up making the answers feel even more meaningful to us. And that's how I've thought about this quote. That's true. And I also am tied to this phrase. They were seldom easy. It's like, what does it mean for an answer to not be easy? It's because, Oh, it can be difficult to process, but it can also kind of be difficult to be, done with that search right it's like oh yeah does denna love me or not yes or no and once you find out it's like oh that kind of brings a finality to our whole relationship that we've been pursuing which you know it is an honest sort of connection and then oh um you know it 
like who who are the change you know you know like that that kind yeah. of thing it's like oh once i know is that going to make me living without my parents any easier you know the these kind of ideas of what it means to have a a question or an answer i mean that is seldom easy but always important i think is such a fun question here so here's that's so true charles and here's a Another way I think about this is through the more meta aspect of it. When you think of the King Killer Chronicle as a story with two out of three books out, and when you start talking about the King Killer Chronicle, many people will be that'll be one of the first things they start <laughs> talking about is that there are only two out of three books. And you know, you and I have always been of this mentality of <laughs> wanting Rothfuss to take whatever time. He feels is appropriate to to get that third book out in a way that he feels comfortable with and is happy with. And I think that this sort of two out of three, and we're waiting on that ants, those important answers still to finally come out, makes it where like you see, I feel like you see this in Rothfuss's writing, whether it's whether he means it to be explicitly meta or not. I I bet in this case, he probably did not mean it to be explicitly meta, but you see that these are the ways that he thinks about things. And I wonder if part of the holdup for the third book becomes these ideas we've talked about of Rothfuss is much more interested in uh, people like searching for the answers and people asking themselves questions and people learning from that process than he is in providing them with just easy answers. Like, oh, well, like, here's what happens at the end oh like here's whether quoth and den end up together here's whether quoth ever defeats the chandry and like all those things that were who here's the king that quoth supposedly kills at some point like yeah. all those things that we're wondering i think that rothfuss seems much more interested in the wondering and what that can do for us than in the providing of easy answers. And I think he does want to provide those answers eventually, but he wants them to be important, not necessarily easy. That's so well said. And it's, it's true. It, the struggle. And again, going back to this phrase, being caught up in your feelings, that's the whole point of this story. That's where we can derive most of our in, enjoyment from this story. So the fact that he's, prioritizing that and then discussing answers as being seldom easy I, I, it's super interesting yeah I agree with that Charles do we have more on that one or shall we no, move on I, to the next let's move on to the next one cool so the next one is perhaps the greatest faculty our minds possess is the ability to cope with pain Charles where <laughs> we're in this kind of <laughs> like a dark place in the quotes over here of but it's kind of interesting because there's the there's the reference to pain and the intense pain that people often deal with and at the same time this more strengths based aspect of like actually this is one of our the most amazing things about humans is how resilient they are. Like the greatest faculty our minds possess is that we can cope with so much. And it, you know, it means so much hearing it from coat when we know how much he has been through as a person to reach his point where he's ridiculously beaten down, even though he's, we, he seems to be in his twenties would be i don't think his age is ever given but that seems to be where he's at and he's been through so much but he still believes that there's ability to cope with the level of pain that he's experienced yeah yeah you know it's it's the ability to cope with pain yeah that's so interesting because i think a lot of this book also is kind of about resilience in some way we know at the beginning of this book quote as yeah. went through so much trauma and from losing his family and from growing up on the streets and then from being an outcast at school and this will they won't they relationship with Denna and mm-hmm. that's a lot that he's going through beyond just the like what you could what people argue is like the plot of this book which is like oh vengeance against the Chandrian or something like that where it's like oh there's um so much going on here that we're processing that we're trying to figure out and it's truly a 
wonder of the mind that we are able to be as resilient as we are giving how many yeah. like challenging things can happen to us and that's always a beautiful a beautiful sentiment so no, i think that's a great i think that's a great quote um, yeah so i agree charles let's pull up another one here um i see here that we've got uh, a few quotes and I'll just pull one here. Uh, let's let's just get into it. I needed to let them know they couldn't hurt me. I've learned that the best way to stay safe is to make your enemies think you can't be hurt. And this idea of masks coming up again, it's also mm-hmm. like the story that we tell about ourselves, it's using it to our advantage. Like sometimes masks can be a dangerous thing. But this is the image that Quoth has put around himself, that he's almost this mythical being, that he can do all of these incredible things. The bloodless. The bloodless. You can't get to the point where he bleeds. Exactly. And even though we know that that was fabricated, it's not because he's like this super epic being, but he took some herb or something yeah. like that beforehand. And, and he's made mask. that as part of his story. And that's a mask. And we know Quoth has had problems trying to live up to his reputation of himself and his confidence in himself is the root of almost all of his problems. So it's interesting to see like, oh, uh, I, I can't be hurt. I'm strong. I am rejecting my, my vulnerability or my feelings. Like that's the image I project out into the world. And that's the dangerous slope that he's gotten himself in. So, so well said, Charles, because, yeah, you're talking about the the strength that this can provide. And I think that's true in some ways being able to pre- <coughs> sorry, uh, being able to present oneself as as unable to be hurt can can protect you against people like pure evil like the Chandrian who might want to hurt you. Not that he has a lot of run-ins with them. But it can help you sometimes in pushing people away who might hurt you. And so many people have hurt Quoth so many times that it makes sense he started to believe this. Like, I need to put up a protective shield that makes people think I'm not like what he seems to be deep down, which is like a really hurt, emotionally, I would say traumatized uh, person who, when push comes to shove, you know, when Ari comes in and he's and he's having a reaction to that um the thing he took i can't remember what's called but the thing he took that makes him tell the truth sometimes in the wise man's fear mm. and uh, he's like having a reaction to that and he starts telling the truth to ari he just breaks down and he cries and he lets her in to all of this that is underlying that mask and i think that like that's what's keeping quoth from having the connection that he might be looking for with a lot of people, especially Denna. It's like we talk all the time on here, Charles, about how Quoth consistently, and Denna too, you know, you got to give her the, the, I guess, the the blame that she uh, warrants as well for her part in this. But both of them have this difficulty being vulnerable with each other. And being vulnerable is about, I think, in a lot of ways, showing that you can be hurt showing that you do have that softer more emotional side and opening yourself up to the idea of being hurt even even yeah giving someone the opportunity to hurt you but to also not hurt you when you've left yourself open to be hurt and to be shown for someone like quoth who's been through so much trauma and been hurt in so many ways i think that for him to develop a deep connection it's a lot of it is about kind of having this like corrective emotional experience of like i put myself out there i'm ready i know this could hurt me and then if someone like denna who who knows we don't know that much about denna really Mm -hmm. still it's like but if someone like denna if he exposed himself to be hurt by her and she didn't hurt him like that's vulnerability that's connection and i think that's what he and denna would need to do with each other to get together and it's interesting because you see him have the capability to do that really like only with Ari really it's always yeah. been an interesting relationship with yeah. Ari well Ari way. just seems almost innocent in a way and yeah very much non-judgmental and very much thinks in a different way than a lot of people do and 
Definitely. And so she seems like a great, a great person to kind of vent to because um, she does. She just understands you at a level beyond the mat. Like she knows the ways of things, right? Like that's kind of yes. her. Like she can look at a thing and it knows its mood and understands it. So she understands Quoth by looking at him and she, she could see through any of these masks. And Quoth, I think, understands mm. that about her. And so there's no pretense with, with Ari. And, true. And so the fact that they're able to connect on some level, I think a huge part of that is that Quoth is able to um, take the mask off, so to speak, um, yeah. when he's around her. And she sees Quoth for what he is, which um, we don't, we're not fully sure what that is, but it's enough to keep Ari's interest and, and to keep Ari um, thinking about him and wanting to help him and, and things like that, which is not something she normally tries to do. So there's a lot of interesting things about that Ari relationship and this idea of masks and this idea of unreliable narration that I think is super interesting. And that's another thing that I think this quote does where this is another of several instances throughout this whole book of this idea of, Oh, we can tell stories to present images of ourselves, you know? And that's just like, okay, well this is the story is a story of someone telling an image of themselves, yeah. right? So it's just another reminder of that too, which I think is super fun. And I can't wait for this, you know, when this book does come out to see exactly um, how all of this kind of pays off or if it pays off. And it, it's just fun to see where it's going to go with, with Coat. Well said, Charles. Yeah. So the Ari and Quoth relationship is so interesting. Hearing you talk about the ways in which Ari sees herself as caring for Quoth, and we also know very well that Quoth sees himself as caring for Ari too. And mm. the, what's interesting, I don't think of them as romantic in their relationship, no, really. No, I think of them either. as more like a, a brother-sister type yeah. thing is what it feels like. And I think why they're such a good fit for each other in that su mutually supportive way is because... Ari has it's like they have what each other lack kind of like their strengths are each other's weaknesses for uh, like Quoth struggles with uh, just letting things be what they are um, at their fundamental Quoth is always overthinking and trying to make things different than what they actually are and uh, like <laughs> stuck in his head and those kind of things and Ari has her own struggles with that but she actually does understand things at this more like fundamental level and it's more that like it's tough because the world the world isn't always in touch with what uh ari kind of sees as the what things are at their base like uh sh and i think that there's also this like ari can express herself like emotionally and very uh, like she can be in her feelings in a way in which quoth struggles to yeah oh but sh then she struggles with these more like pragmatic st street smart things that quoth is better at like yes. just literally like acquiring food and but feeding quoth yourself can still and, understand like, ari this yes. idea of being you know be they're both really good at naming quoth does have right. this sensitive side to him that when he does remember to turn it on he can be very in tune with sometimes he's just totally forgets yeah. that he can do that and, and fumbles around relationships but somehow with ari he can kind of let his guard down and actually establish an honest connection mm. and um yeah he's very perceptive to what she's able to do and and yeah, yeah their relationship is that, super interesting i'd yeah maybe a we could do an episode down the line of like Quoth and Ari's relationship. I think we'd have a lot to say, but yeah, my last thing is, is thinking on that, Charles, I think you, you said so well as Quoth does to have that side to him. And I think Ari has sides to her too, that are able to come out when she's with Quoth. And it's not, even, I know I said they have something the other lacks, but it's more that they are able to bring out the sides in each other yes. that are not always at the surface. And that kind of brings it back to this quote of like, I need to let them know they couldn't hurt me and uh, trying to make your enemies think you can't be hurt. It's like they both just see each other as people who can be hurt and are willing to share that with each other in a way where they trust each other not to 
not to hurt each other. And I think it's like that's part of the issue with the the Quoth and Denno relationship is they're too alike. Like, yes, they're so similar. They're very and similar. They can't. They have, and then they both struggle to bring out that more vulnerable side. But someone like Ari is so is very different, or more in touch, or more in touch with that vulnerable side of her that she she can kind of pull Quoth in that direction and show that that is their underlying that shield he's put up. Yeah. No, I like hearing you explain it like that, and it's. It's so interesting, and I, I do want to maybe revisit this conversation for a future episode because we yeah. we've talked about Quoth and Dona quite a bit, but Quoth <laughs> and Ari is one that, I, you know, reading all these quotes back to back has got me recontextualizing their relationship in a way that I find yeah. super interesting. It's like, and it brings back to like, it, what is this idea of a genuine connection with Quoth, and what does that mean about like the greater story? So, yeah, yeah, I think because he doesn't even one. have that with like Sim and Will, really, like not in the way he has with Ari. He's not gonna, or he has not to this point broken down and t- expressed all his pain and hurt to Sim. And, right. and Sim seems like a super nice dude, yeah, and I feel like yeah. he would be receptive to that. But Quoth does not do that. It's just interesting. Yeah, very interesting. So. All right, Dylan, where are we at? Should we bring in another quote quote or have we kind of kept it on theme for so long that? Though, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm looking at some of these well, quotes and it just feels thing. like it's going to yeah. disrupt the vibe to exactly. read some of these. <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking at them, too, and having the same reaction is kind of we we ended up on this theme of pulling these quotes kind of about like pain and vulnerability and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking at these other quotes and some of them do fit together with each other in a way right. where we could have another sort of theme conversation. And I don't know. I actually think rather than tacking on, no pun yeah. intended, oh. uh, let's t- <laughs> let's just play the beautiful game and mm. uh, say we're done here. We've we've covered this in in a thematic way and I, I, I feel happy with it. I'm I feel happy with it too. I feel like to read some of these would almost kind of not necessarily be inappropriate, but it would definitely change the vibe and this deep yeah. into the show, I think we've done a very good job of keeping things all around this idea of being in your feelings and emotional vulnerability and yeah. this idea of the beautiful game that I think we're good here. Yeah. I think we did a great job. You know, I almost presenting feel like yourself in a particular way as a mask. Right. Let's be what we are, Charles. Let's let this episode be what it is rather than wearing a mask. This episode yes. is about, you know, I guess, vulnerability and pain and learning from that and, and sharing moments with each other. And Charles, yeah. it's been an absolute honor yes. to share this moment with you i feel the exact same way it's almost like it's almost like we're giving a it's almost like a sermon kind of where you you read from the good book of patrick rothfuss and then you kind of put this thesis together of how we can take that (laughs) away in our in our everyday lives and derive value and meaning from it you know and i'm happy to be having these revelations with my lifelong friend and co-host dylan oh charles (laughs) always a wonderful journey to be on with you and I'm looking forward to continuing the journey because it is about journey, not destination for us when it comes to the King Killer Chronicle and this journey of reading Patrick Rothfuss's quotes and learning from it and and sharing them with each other, Charles. I I want to keep doing it. So I'm sure we'll be back with more quote quotes and other prose at some point in yes. the not too distant future. Yes, I'm, looking I'm picturing like the end of a Marvel movie where it's like quote quotes and other pros will continue. <laughs> it's like more is coming, guys. We the, This beautiful yeah. game is not yet over. So we Ooh. will continue to play. And for now, let's play that sweet, sweet outro music. What do you think, Dylan? I think that Quoth would love to get some of that music pumping. Ari might even come <laughs> over when she starts hearing that music. Oh, so I okay. think that, yeah, she does okay. love that. So I think yeah. that this is a perfect time to... Be present with that sweet, sweet outro music. All right, here we go. 
thank you everyone for listening to yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. This has been your co-host Charles and Dylan on a very King Killer episode. If yeah. you like what you heard today, you want to bring up the conversation some more, let's bring it over to Twitter over at the FTF Podcast with a number one at the end. Mm-hmm. And Instagram is a great option as well over at the FTF Podcast. Now, Dylan, if someone was listening to the show, they liked what they heard, and they want to support the show even further than social media, and they just so happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, what can they do? Toss five stars to our podcast. Just find that Friends Talking Fantasy page on the Apple Podcast app. Scroll down past all those episodes until you start seeing stars. Once you're seeing stars, the optimal number of those to click to support the show would be five of them. If you have a little bit of extra time and you want to write a review, then that can be even more helpful for a podcast like ours. But just listening to us quote the incredibly insightful Patrick Rothfuss during this episode and listening to our musings on it, that is more than enough. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you all so much for listening. We greatly appreciate it. And as always, go forth and conquer, friends.